no homo no back to channel 69 y'all this boss brit i want to be clear she came up with this channel on her own we never discussed it but i love it i'm with it listen second time back no homo yeah. No news, no homo news. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> we got y'all comments. Y'all was rocking with it. Y'all gave some feedback. Hey, it's our second time. We busy. Appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. We trying. Y'all like it. Yes. And uh our purpose here is to really cover everything. Gay, 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 gay. All the gay, gay news, y'all from the gay gods. And I know y'all said, like, damn, y'all had a depression at the end. So we put the depressing stuff in the middle. <laughs> I mean, I, really I, hate mean you. <laughs> I mean, I'm not trying to depress people, but I want us to cover real news that's going on. We gotta talk about the real stuff out there, y'all. We're trying to keep y'all informed, keep everybody educated. You gotta stay 10 toes on your feet. You know what I'm saying? Period. Period. You went deep with it, okay? I didn't say that right, 10 toes on your feet. I just was gonna slide past it. I don't even know if that's how you say it for real, but we back at it. Channel 69. Yes, sir. So first, let's get into the No Homo Show. We just dropped a new episode. Yes. We dropped the episode can with the Cliff. Applause? Can we get the applause? See, I showed her that I got. we got some special effects, and I knew the girl wouldn't wait more than two minutes. We dropped a new episode with Cliff here. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, of course, of course. Thank you. Yeah, I shout out to Cliff Vermeer, man. Hey, he was so dope and so fine. Cliff is fine, bro. He is like, a baddie. And then the crazy thing is, if y'all watched the episode of, uh, already, you know my hairstyle is bailed on me that same day. Ooh, so like, I was looking rough. <laughs> With a celebrity hairstylist on the show. That's wow. He should have took you to the bathroom and just whipped you Man. up real quick. Something like that. Some gel, uh, baby hair. Gel. Hey, this is how y'all know Excel ain't been a girl in so long. This girl said some gel. Like, hey, no, look, look. I know it. Hey, no, look. The other day I tried to put like, because my hair was looking rough. Yeah. I tried to put jam right here, right? And my wife was like brushing his teeth. Right, try to lay my hair down, bro. It looked like straight baby hairs. We both started dying because no, that was did you take a picture? I, I need to see I try that. I tried to push it back. I tried to push it back. Like, what the heck? She but anyway, but Cliff was super dope. He actually talked about um from making five fifty thousand dollars a month mm -hmm. a to month. going full chasing his dream uh rap career. Yeah, to going homeless for a couple of weeks. Yeah. It got real. So yeah, the I hope story it was dope. And I appreciated yeah. him for speaking on that too. Cause like people need to know what it takes to get to where people are. You get what I'm saying? Cause they see him and he been lit to the common person. Like they know Cliff. He said he got his break at what like 15, between 15, 18. He was young when he got out there. So yeah. it's I really appreciated him like opening up on that part and really be able to tell a story. So keep running that episode up, y'all, because we going yeah. up all 2024, y'all. And I hope Cliff really tell his audience that he's on there too, because I feel like people that even follow him, they yeah. will learn so much about him. So you know how it go. I'm glad he answered my question about how you tuck. You did. I, we gonna I post always, that on. <laughs> I always wanted to know. No, why would Britt ask him how do men tuck? Because don't y'all be wanting to know like where is it? Because you don't be seeing it, and it's I'm like I gonna... know you got one. Girl, I'll be feeling so gay because I'll be like, because <laughs> I'll just be like, right? I just want to know where it's at. It's a real art, like, yo, I don't see it. Y'all, if you didn't watch it, this is a little. I'm going to tell y'all something he told us that was crazy. He, yeah. when Britt asked him that, he said that he got um surgery. What was it called? A tummy tuck, yeah. and they actually pulled his skin up, so like they kind of pulled his. PP up. Imagine you just looking down and you're like, am I, am I got higher? Am I on salute? <laughs> like, yeah, that was crazy. Never would have thought about something like that. But yeah, thank you for opening yeah. up. I learned a lot, per usual. Yeah. I know how much all, you know? And y'all need to watch that. But let me zoom in real quick. Let me zoom in because 
if y'all don't already know, yes, the No Homo Show. Go ahead, Britt. Finish. Finish. We you going know. on tour, y'all. <laughs> we going oh. on a national tour. Where does a pause at? <laughs> I'll get there. A pause. And listen, if you don't plan on coming on the tour. Wow, wow, you wow. Wow. I know you had that one. I pulled that one out. Y'all, listen. Look, we so childish. We, I, I thought I surprised her. Look. <laughs> no, for real, uh, y'all. Y'all have to be there. This is going to be a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Y'all don't want to miss it. And we keep we keep saying this isn't – this is, of course, you're going to get the same feel as you do as our as our show. But we're doing crowd interaction. We're um interviewing some special guests from y'all cities, and we're doing crowd participation. Like when I say crowd participation, I'm talking about y'all might come up on stage and do something crazy. Yeah, we gotta get the we gotta get the party started. It's the show, but it's also a party. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be it's gonna I'm be different. crazy, y'all. It's not that everybody already got their tickets because look, the tickets are selling. People are getting their VIP meet and greet tickets where they get to chill with us for a second. We might take a shot with y'all. <laughs> we about to have so much fun, y'all. Y'all, we do first. this. Yeah, we do this. So Philly, first, man, April 28th, Philly. Get y'all tickets. Yes, we're going to Philly. We're going to D.C., Miami, Atlanta, Vegas, Houston, and we're adding more dates, y'all. So some of y'all was kind of like, hold up, my city not on there. Tell y'all how this promoter or, or DM us. Come yeah. on. We're going we to get it together, y'all. Definitely but DM us. We're trying to work with everybody out there. We're trying to get to as many places as possible, y'all. So hit us up. Yeah. Okay. Tour, baby. We going on tour. <laughs> <laughs> we driving a bus on tour. What is that? It was like a skirt, like a little burnout. Skrr. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's get into the first. Come the on, first Jason tour. Lee. Change you can count on. Can y'all believe? Yeah. Jason. All right. So for those that don't know, Jason Lee was running for count council in Stockton, California. Mm -hmm. Right. And he actually. Like he was saying it on his shows, but he was saying on his shows, like, y'all, I'm still going to be myself. Like, don't think I'm not going to talk messy. You know what I'm saying? And he's, he low key was like, y'all, I'm already rich. So don't think this is a money grab because this low key is taken away from my bag. Cause he had to move. I think, I believe he lived like LA. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He had to move to Stockton, his, his hometown. Mm -hmm. Am I saying it right? Stockton? Stockton yeah. He had to move back to his hometown um, to even run for camp council. So, like, imagine being, you know, I don't know how far that is, you know what I'm saying, from, yes. like, L.A., but imagine, you know, you being fast-paced every day, got that motion, and have to move back to your hometown to even run for council, man. So, um, shout out to Jason Lee. And if y'all don't know who this man is, because I'm very shocked that some people don't know who Jason Lee is. Y'all might know him from Love and Hip Hop. He was a lot bigger, not a lot. Sorry, Jason. I'm not trying to be shady, but he was bigger when he was on the show. He lost a lot of weight. He looking good. I didn't know he was pushing 50. I actually read yeah. his book too, and his book was really good. Like, he talked about. Um, like how his mom was on drugs and he grew up in a foster home and he got shot before his brother got killed. Like he's yeah. been through a lot. So I'm I'm happy for him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I feel like I was definitely a little shocked. Like, was you a little shocked that he did something like this? Cause he's known for being like messy. He owns Hollywood Unlocked. Like probably y'all know Hollywood Unlocked the block. So I didn't really see that coming. Did you see that coming? I did not. Yeah, I like he's about to be a councilman. But you know what? It proves that, like, you know, like, even with us, when people say, like, what's your goals? Like, yeah. we can say, like, some things, but really stuff is beyond us. Like, something might come up that we couldn't even imagine. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or he could have, like, crossed paths with, like, some people from his neighborhood and be like, bruh, these council, the councilman on this board don't understand the struggles that my people are going through. And Correct. I'm the only one that could help that. So I really do hope, 
I don't see any benefit in it for him other than really helping his community. So, oh, yeah, I really see. I mean, of course, there's some benefits, but like from what he already had going on, like yeah, check. Let's be clear. I'm playing. I'm playing. Yeah. I'm playing. I don't know how much you get paid for that, y'all. I'm just joking. But now nah, he really put the groundwork in. You know what I'm saying? He was out there running his campaign. And yeah, from what I read, from knowing just reading his book, I never even heard his talk until I read his book. But it's not a it's not an easy place to grow up. It's hard, it's rough streets. So I hope he really do go in there, make some differences. And he's not he hasn't won just yet. So he won enough to go to the official election, which is in November. Oh, okay. See, I thought he won. No, this congrats. Congrats, Mr. Official, yeah. <laughs> There's levels to this shit. Congrats. Yeah, for real. Nah, he made it to the next one, so he's gonna go to the official when the election is in November, and he'll be running, and that's when he could really, you know, actually win that position. But for the most part, he's qualified. Oh, votes. Okay, but that's major though. Shoot, I yeah. mean, I know campaigning and all that stuff not easy. Plus, he was still shooting his podcast, still shooting his show. Like what? Talking crazy. <laughs> Man, it's talking crazy. Like, yeah, I can't talk about all that anymore. I'm gonna run for councilman. Like, Jason, give us the messiness. I hope you don't stop being messy because he was like, he's like, I know people say like Charlemagne is like the female Wendy Williams, but Jason Lee kind of gave me that energy too. Like, he gonna call you out. He gonna talk about some real. As, you know, as he should. As, as he should. should. Okay. So, Lee. so I wonder when is the um. See, I don't know. Look I'm at Johnny Blaze to... in the comments. I know that's right. Okay, period. Shout out to Johnny Blaze. Um, yeah, so my bad. I thought he did win, but yeah, congrats, Jason Lee. Yo, because yeah. every step matters, yo. And just Thanks. just um winning those votes, knowing people actually believe in you is really, really dope. So, Shout okay. Okay, so let's get into the next thing. This is a sad topic, y'all. I'm not going to lie. And, Bert, you can speak more on it. Yeah, for sure. Like, so this is super unfortunate, y'all. We have lost um, Chevy Hill. If y'all don't know who Chevy Hill is, uh, he's notorious. He's a, a trans man. Um, he's not from Atlanta. I think he's from Macon, Georgia. But he had an Atlanta-based uh, hair salon and barbershop that catered towards the LGBTQ+. Plus community and that's actually where I met him at and um on February 29th it was reported that he was murdered which was so crazy and so like ironic because he had just DM me like when I say just DM me on Facebook like maybe not even a week before that and he was just saying like yo when we get to the top I'm gonna see you there we gonna take a shot and I was just like, that's crazy because, like, you just never know when it's your time to go. Like, but the one thing I will say about Chevy is that he always showed love. Even that last, you know, message is kind of like, I'm glad he did that because that's how I always remembered him from the, the start. You know, always showing me love. I, uh, I met him through my barber skit. You know what I'm saying? They did a documentary there. So, yeah, rest in peace. It's definitely a sad story. I don't really know what happened. But when I saw he got murdered, I was like, what? Because I heard he passed. I didn't know how. And then this this story came out, um, you know, on Gay Magazine. And it said he was murdered. And I was like, whoa. Mm -mm. It's a crazy world. And I don't know the backstory. You know, of course, there's a bunch of stuff going around. But, yeah, rest in peace. Long live Chevy Hill for sure. Yo, you, you never know. You never know what somebody's going through or when's the last time you're going to talk to them. Yeah, you know cause I was like, that was just crazy just to receive that love before he, you know, passed on. But yeah, rest in peace. Definitely sending prayers to the family and friends. He was loved by a lot of people. Like, you know, a lot of people was online and that write-up was really good too. I think, I don't know if Gay Magazine wrote it or if they took it from a different blog, but that write-up was really good and had a really good summary of like what he meant to the community. So yeah, he definitely had an impact. That's one thing I will say. So rest in peace, Chevy Hill for sure. And that's why it's also important to be good to people, to support yeah. people. Because look at your last memory. Like, that's dope. Really? You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's dope. And that's a legacy because, like, I don't really know too many, like, LGBT hair salons or barbershops. And then I just know how, like, our market is. Like, I, I don't, you know, that probably was even hard to keep up with. You know what I'm saying? Like, you need the support from your community. You're 
gearing it towards that demographic. So like, yeah, shout out to him for even doing something that was so innovative because I never heard of a. Have you ever heard of an LGBT like hair salon barbershop? Nah, they invited me out there though. Yeah, when I, I, I feel y'all, like you when before. I first moved, yo, when I first moved to Atlanta, I lived in Stone Mountain for about a year. We all was on the east side. Woo! <laughs> Ooh, I done dodged that bullet. Literally. Hey, east side right? was rough. It reminded me of Cincinnati. That's why I loved it though. East side was ghetto, but y'all, it was I always say this about Atlanta. It was a culture shock for me <laughs> because up north, like if there's a gated commuting community, that's yeah. more of a rich or upscale type of community. Yeah. Um, down here, they gated to lock your ass in that motherfucker. <laughs> All right, because it was like you in. It was the when I moved there, I'm like, oh, it's, it's a gated community. It's nice. Yeah. Bruh. Bruh. What did you know? I, I went, yeah, they were shooting every day. But I had a townhouse for like six hundred and fifty dollars, bro. No, that no, rent, no roaches, okay? No roaches. Not you some. <laughs> hey, I'm okay you would take that risk six fifty. Oh I no, have, I, bro. I, I was there for bullets. like my first two years. I probably I was there for at least two years, and I was like, bro, fifty total, or that was your half? Nah, bro. It was so a townhouse, was- two, uh, three. Three, two and a half bathrooms, but it was it was legit. It was legit. Hey, if I if I ever you know, I doubt it's that now. That was that right. was like eight years ago. Yeah, right. I was about to say I'll call them if I can't. You know, if I ever can't. <laughs> hey, yo, you remember me? Look up. <laughs> <laughs> Not some bullets. <laughs> yo, facts. Well, all right. Shout out to East Side of Atlanta, man. I had a good time out there, yeah. man. Yeah, phase one, all that. All right, phase one. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like on you. I- I was so lucky because phase one was five minutes from my house. Now. Right? It was like 10 minutes from mine, yeah. so I was always in phase yeah. one. Shout out to Miss Angie, boy. If y'all don't know, that's a that was a historic lesbian spot right. down here. Miss um, Angie like Miss Gladys. You know what I'm saying? Well, okay. Baby, shout out Miss Gladys. Uh, okay. Ms. Angie. So look, remember I told y'all we're going to put some sad stuff, but we're going to put it in the middle so we're not ending on a sad note. But we got to keep it real here, all right? Let's keep it real. Let's keep it a buck. This is a story out. Let me bring it up for you guys, okay? Um, there's a page I found on Facebook. Mm-hmm. If y'all haven't heard of it, it's called um Snatch Snatching Pride. Um, so oh, yeah, I'm in there. They yeah, yeah, they be giving real stories. So um, let me see. If I... So basically, this uh. From from this, I even look. They actually have a, a article as well. I don't know mm. if, the, but um, I actually seen the the news article. So basically, this forty year old woman, um, her ex broke it off with her, and her ex was twenty one. All right. Um, mm-hmm. this is. Uh, let me see if I could bring up pictures of them. And um, she actually took her ex's life, and like. Left her body out in the street, uh, full sad. of gunshots. Sad. Very, very, very sad. Oh damn! They went into the. They went into the real. Uh, For real. And, and y'all. Oh, too sad. The reason. The reason I even bring this up. Let me see. Body is found Saturday night in the middle of the West Avenue. Yeah. And they were saying it's because the the younger girl left her. Um, I think it's important to bring that up because, yo, there is a lot of domestic violence within the gay community. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, we know situations even out here, like people that got shot and stuff. And it's like, I don't care if y'all heartbroken or what. It's never worth taking somebody's life because you're losing yours too. And some people, they feel like they feel like they want to die. Yeah. When they person leaves them, but y'all, yeah, y'all, you'll get through it. Yeah. I know it's easier said than done. We all had tough times. That's why mental health is real, man. Like you gotta really 
pay attention to people. You got to pay attention to yourself. Because that, I don't know what would make a person, like you said, want to take somebody's life and throw away their own life. That is just, mental health is real, man. Prayers going out to the family, though, for sure. Family, yes. friends, she was so young, 21. Sad. Yes. And that's not the first story, unfortunately, with her no. you know, people killing their partners. So, yeah, sad, yeah. man. Super, super sad. Mm -hmm. That, I believe, happened March 7th or March 6th. Yeah. So, all right, y'all. Yeah. The real sad stuff is out the way. Okay. God wow, bless everybody. these crazy ass studs, man. I wonder if she was giving any red flags or anything. Like, Have you ever dated somebody you feel like, well, um, like, really, like, really me? hurt you? Yeah, like, who? Yeah, I know I talked about the one joint that used to choke me. But I never felt like... I. <laughs> I'm being serious. <laughs> you know it was serious. Damn, that's oh, sad. Like, I had to fight. Okay. Yeah. Yo, but um, Oof. I mean, I never felt, I never felt on some real stuff like my life was. Life at was risk. at risk. Yeah. And I and I don't even think we dropped this episode yet, but we were speaking how like so many people would tell their friends and family like if something happens to me. It's such and such. Like, bro, yeah. if you feel that way, head out. Like, you, you really feel that way? Head out, please. At least you have a reason. Like, you're fight for your life and dip out. Some people, I, I understand. Some people feel like, yo, I can't leave. He's going to kill me. But if you yeah. stay and he kills you. So I just. <laughs> Why would you say, man? I'm trying to be serious. <laughs> No, I'm just saying, make it make sense. All right, I'm gonna start zooming in on my face. No, seriously. No, Why for real. I and I think that sometimes, a lot of times, it'd be a bunch of not signs. Not too tired. Not too tired. No, I'm trying to like you. So stupid. My bad. My bad. <laughs> a lot of times, it'd be it'd be signs, y'all. Like it'd be signs there, and you be ignoring it because I understand. Like you probably so in love. You probably never had nobody there for you. Probably don't want to be alone. I. Get it, but your life is so much more valuable, y'all. If you are in a domestic relationship, if you're in any toxic relationship, y'all try y'all best to you can try to work it out, but after so many times, kid, please. Uh oh, phone is my bad. Head on out for real. Head on out, man. Head yeah. on out. All right, next topic. Let's get into it. Let's get it. I'll let you read this out loud. All right, Britt. You ever had a say <laughs> is rapper JP gay or was he just curious, y'all? Do y'all know who JP is, y'all? This guy has been going viral. He's a, a rapper from Milwaukee and he has a song out right now on TikTok going super viral called Bad Bitty. You ever had a bitch? I put Excel onto it today earlier, and she was the one. Yeah, like this. All right, first of all, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play the I'm gonna play the audio in a second. But shout out to four one one uncut in Cincinnati, my girl Nella D. Yes. All right. So first of all, Brit be having me do. <laughs> let me go. Let me go closer. Y'all know how y'all just gotta me, do with trending. She be having me do the dumbest yeah, TikToks, y'all. Yeah, and I'll be really. <laughs> and I'll be really trying, but when y'all see that. And y'all think I look stupid. Don't <laughs> think I don't know I look stupid. I we know gonna I post look. it as a short on uh on YouTube so y'all can yeah. see it. <laughs> we gotta start posting our our yeah, 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 for sure. Okay, so let me try to restart this. Real I made quick. a decision to crack a okay, I feel that. Let me bring it back up. All I right. made a decision to have a boyfriend, so I, I don't like you. niggas. Fucking the fuck I don't like niggas. I just tapped that nigga. Y'all, uh, y'all, would you do it again? I ain't gonna lie, me making my decision, nigga, that's like the same way you made a decision to crack a bad bitch or like to crack a hoe. I made a decision to crack a nigga. I don't know. Gee, certified check. Hey, shit, money good. I'm cracking shit. Look, I don't like, I don't like niggas. Okay. I don't like niggas. I just tapped that nigga. Look, I don't like niggas. I don't like niggas. I just tapped that nigga. You see that dog? Go back to that. You see that dog in the comments? 
Go back. That's how I feel. Bye, bitch. Like the cracker hoe. Yeah, I made a decision to crack a knee. That's how I feel like I was. Certified checks. Hey, shit, money good. I can't, I can't, I can't post it this time. I feel like I'm looking like that dog. I was like, hold up. Hold up. Anybody else hearing this? So, so, Britt, basically, tell them, like, all right, so he got a trending song out right now. He's buzzing and stuff. The song is going up. It's going viral. He done had Chris Brown doing a dance. All the celebrities is bopping to it. And y'all know how the internet do. You know they going to do their research. You know, somehow then it came across a picture of him Mm -hmm. with 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 a clearly, you know, gay guy. And then I guess he was on live and they asked him about him. And that's what he said. He said, you ever had a bitch game team? You ever had a bitch in your knees? Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a, Yo, so, all right. So basically, this is the thing, though, y'all. I'm trying to find an image real quick. Um, yeah, and is he gay um, for um, so let's talk. About, so let's talk about it. He said, nah, he's not gay. He's seen a dude cracked his back open. Bow, bow, bow. But hey, but hey, I'm not gay. I just did that. Right. If you did it in the past, see, this is the thing. It's more than just doing that, bro. You're taking pictures. You're booed up. Like, let me see if I can find. Hey, but not for nothing. I used to talk to guys, and I took pictures with guys. So did that make me still straight? I Am like I bisexual? Are you? <laughs> it's hey. giving vibrant. B i b r i t t hashtag vibrant. Okay. I'm working with y'all. I'll I, think see. A, I think it's a double standard. Like men can't be by people think like men can't be by i even just seen recently a clip you know chance the rapper little brother came out and he said he's bisexual and he was having a conversation with a guy who tried to tell him he's gay the other guy telling him he's gay like how you gonna tell a man what he is ain't nothing coming up so hold on so he's by nah um so he his his brother's by and yeah. somebody said, "What? Nah, he's gay." Yeah, he tried. He said, "Chance the Rapper brother said I'm bi," and then he was saying, "I talked to a dude." And the dude said, "Nah, you gay." <laughs> like trying to dismiss him being bi. Like men, for whatever reason, and it it do be tough to be like, "Nah, is that?" It, it, it's just it's just tough it's with men. Standards. Yeah, yeah, especially I don't know with I guess more masculine presenting men who rap about women. I don't know. Well, you know what. It's a double standard. Yeah, but I don't feel that bad about it. That's what I'm saying. Because I, when when a man is sleeping around, he ain't no hoe, but a girl's a hoe. She's a thought, all that. Well, it's about time y'all feel what we feel a little bit. <laughs> right. We said what we said. <laughs> you stupid as hell. I'm just saying, I can understand, and I can, and I do see how it is unfair to the to gay men, but yeah. it, but but if he only did it once. No, but he kind of was like, I broke, he kind of like hyped it up. It was like, it's like if y'all seen a bad bitch, that dog. But yeah, hold bitch, up. Bitch, mm-hmm. I can't believe they found that man T that quick. He just, that song been popping for maybe a month or two. Y'all already found his dirty laundry. But on another note, salute to him for not denying it. Yeah, facts. Because a lot of y'all, a lot of men out here. Y'all done been through the same stuff, and y'all are not claiming it. Y'all would deny it to the grave. So at least he stood on business. <laughs> Girl, no, you didn't. No, you didn't say he stood on business. He stood on business. Yo, about the look, back. yo but real, you out of pocket. But look, real talk. Let's zoom in. Real talk. Once you speak your truth, can't nobody use it against you. Correct. And like, what else can they say? Period. That's a fact. That's a, I was like, yo, I'm I'm with it. And then he he winning right now. Song going viral. Chris Brown's doing his trend. Celebrities like, come on now. All right. What Let's get into the about? next topic. You ever had a? Florida's don't say gay law. I'm tired okay, of Florida. 
<laughs> what it, why what's up with florida so this is um a story about a lawsuit settlement in florida over the states don't say gay law um, which will allow students and teachers to openly discuss gender identity and sexual orientation as long as it's not part of classroom instruction. So I guess you can talk about it as long as you're not like learning Teaching. about it in school. Well, let's watch some of this and then let's talk about Are y'all freaking kidding me? <laughs> this is a thing on the agenda? Let's talk about it. Weirdos. A lawsuit settlement in Florida will allow students they and teachers for our to background. openly discuss gender oh, identity kind of and sexual orientation as long as it's not part of classroom instruction. The deal limits the law critics have dubbed Don't Say Gay. Opponents claim the legislation has created fear in schools and uncertainty over what is allowed. Our friend Jim DeFeedy with CBS News Miami joins us now to break Be down the it. details of the settlement. Jim, we always love having you on the yeah. show. Um, tell us more about what this settlement means for schools in Florida. Well, it gives them some sort of clarity. When Let's remember the context of this. This law was passed two years ago by the Florida legislature at a time, and it was one of the cornerstones of Governor Ron DeSantis's culture Don't war battle that they had hoped would propel him to the Republican nomination. Uh, he, after a poor showing in the Iowa caucus, of course, Governor DeSantis dropped out before the first primary. So now we're sort of dealing with the aftermath of many of those laws that were passed during that campaign. And so when things we're seeing now is that there was a lot of fear uh, among school districts as to what exactly the law meant. As you said, critics dubbed it don't say gay. In Florida, it's known as the parental rights and education law. And the law said that you could not have school instruction on heterosexuality, homosexuality, gender identity uh, in K through eight and in a very limited way in high school. The reality was those topics were never being taught as part of instruction in in grade schools and so what ended up occurring was you created a lot of fear among high schools and school districts in ah. general to where could they say for instance could a teacher acknowledge that their spouse was gay could Hello? they display a picture um of their loved ones of their you know same-sex partner on their desk could there be a gay pride flag if a student talked about, you know, in a book report, you know, or in some sort of presentation, what they did over the summer vacation, talk about their two mothers. These things were left very okay, much in so doubt. Long. And there was a lot of fear among educators. So you had students, you had some teachers, you had some parents groups file a lawsuit against the state of Florida. And this settlement clarifies those issues. It says that all those fears do not need to be realized, that, that teachers can talk as long as it's not part of instruction in education but if teachers want to talk about their personal lives as the part of the general discussion in class that's fine i'll, I'll also point out one other key thing that the reaction to this was that for instance uh, straight gay student alliance groups across the state of florida all disappeared uh you know in a large measure because of this law because schools were afraid to allow and sanction meetings of those groups on school campuses because of the law learning if they were going to run afoul Miami-Dade School District, which every year it always issued a proclamation in support of uh, Gay Rights Month, you know, Gay Pride Month. Uh, they didn't this past year because of fear that it may run afoul of the law. You saw those sorts of issues. Now, the governor would say that that was never his intention, say but gay. yet the fear okay. was created as a result of the law. And this settlement now clarifies those things. The governor's declaring victory. Um, groups of parents and students and teachers are also saying they are relieved because they now understand what the law is and what the boundaries and rules. Okay, so let's talk about it. So this kind of like a a win for Florida, kind of. Kind of like a win for the gay, but it's still ridiculous. You know, all right. So let's talk about it. You can't have right. a picture on your desk of you, you and your no, wife. I'm saying before that, you couldn't have a picture on your desk. Yeah, they kind of saying like people wasn't sure, so they wouldn't even do none of that. But look, That's do you crazy. think they like do you think they should talk about it at all from from first to eighth grade? I mean, it depends. Like, there's nothing on a curriculum that requires you to talk about, like, same sex, in my opinion. Like, but if you are 
a teacher and you have and you're and you're gay, I don't think you should feel like you can't have a picture on your desk of you and your wife. But I don't know why you would need to teach that so, per se. Yeah, but look, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. First of all, I feel like kids is learn. I feel like, and I'm not, of course, even in the school system or anything, but I right. feel like um, school is not just about education. Like, like it's not just, um, it's about lifestyle too. Like, like, did, like when I was in middle school, bro, they talked about condoms and stuff. Like sex education, though. Yeah, like, yeah. So it or even when you, like that, I could see you talking about it. But anything else, what? what no. What so so about? like sex education, I did that in middle school. I didn't do that in middle school. I did that in in high school. I did that in um, yeah, in middle school because I specifically remember. Well, you know, you was in middle school a long time ago, so the curriculum is. No, nah, it's <laughs> it Oh, think about it. Kids is fucking in seventh and eighth grade. Oh. They not? <laughs> they they are. They and are. If, but yeah, and I, people, I personally and people are that. finding and people are finding their identity. So I don't think it needs to be as much. I'm not even saying sexual education, but you yeah. kids, if you can't talk about anything gay until ninth grade and kids are trying to find out who they are as an individual and it's not even nothing sexual but yo why do i kind of feel like tomboy is or why do i feel like this and you can't even it, they make you feel like you can't even talk about it like i feel yeah. like they should teach like kind of like acceptance or just like gender identity it don't gotta be nothing sexual because i don't think even even though it is sad that you gotta talk to kids about condoms in seventh grade, that's crazy. That's wild. You know what I'm saying? But like, I'm not even talking about nothing sexual. But I do feel like people kids are starting to find their identity in middle school, bro. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yo, if you feel like you can't talk about how you feel or 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 even get knowledge on it and be like, oh, I identify with that. You you right. know, so many people we interview say like. Yo, I ain't seen no studs in my school type <laughs> stuff. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, and you'd be like, yo, what's going on? So Yeah, I didn't go to no school that really like for my school, it was more like a like a college prep type of school. So we and, didn't, and I mean, I just I just feel like like we don't they don't teach us about straight people. So why would they teach about what gay is i feel like sexual education could that could tie in but i'm just trying to think like why would it be a class like that to me is more like therapy or like your counselor like maybe the counselor mm. has like a safe space where if you have like you feel me i don't think like class is like where we should be talking about but i guess like biology i'm trying to think of what is the subject no, it, you know what i'm saying i mean it could it could be like it could even be i, f I feel bad right now because like, i i i can't think of like in school in there, many years it's okay yeah. it's been like 30. <laughs> and school different though now because you know like the curriculum is different and then leaving like the percentages like a's like 90 to 100 ain't an a no more like school has changed in general so i mean even when having phones maybe they could tie it in some way i just feel like regardless though it shouldn't be banned you know what I mean? Or going to the extent of like having a bill or a law filed against it as if it's something that's negative to even talk about. You know what I'm saying? Like even if a person can't relate to it, what's so wrong with it's just it's just yeah. really we talked about it last week. Like it's just sounding like they're trying to control us, they trying to go narrative. It's scary. What are we talking about last week. Yeah. Hold on. I got a screenshot. Let me see if I can bring it up. And Florida been making a lot of progress in general because at first they was like trying to say they couldn't even have a pride there and stuff. And, you know, thank goodness. Yeah. It's, stuff. It feels like we're going real backwards. That so up like, there, he is on some BS. Yeah. So, it's like, we wah, fake. Wah, wah. We Fake oh hold up hold up hold up hold up. <laughs> we fake celebrating that like hold up this for him. Mm -hmm. 
Nah, so we fake celebrating like this is a victory, and I guess a little bit it is. So even if you're a gay teacher, you probably feel like, yo, I can't even say mm -hmm. I, we we talking about the kids, but even the teachers, like, yo, exactly. I, I got married. I can't even tell y'all I got married to a woman. That's you know what I'm crazy. Saying? Yeah. So, yeah, um, but I did want to say I didn't even tell you this. So, um, not too secretive. Nah, we just busy. We just Excel, busy. Excel, guys, secrets. Excel, guys. Nah, so somebody from um Ghana actually DM'd us. Shout out to said, Ghana. Come on now. Yeah, and because you know we talked about it um Ghana uh, last week, and it says it saddens my heart about how many countries is going about this, and we're just human beings, and we are created by the same God, and we're created like everybody else was created. All right. Um. In case our president signs this bill, all LGBTQ members are in great danger. Already without the bill, people still get beat up. Um, any feminine presenting gay man, they beat them up to death. Just imagine if the bill got signed. Yeah. So um, every, uh, and they're saying like everyone that's against this, like just remember like, Gay people aren't harming, raping, you know, like they're right. not breaking the law, you know, in general, you know what I'm saying? So, um, shout out to Ghana again. And yo, any news we could bring, you know, to bring light on it, you know what I'm saying? And I just, I just feel bad, like to really be in fear of your life, you know what I mean? Is I can uh, imagine. Yeah, it sucks. Definitely. All right, y'all. I didn't want to have to do this because now I'm questioning myself. You on some bullshit? Do you have to be black to be a stud? All right, I'm gonna show y'all this. <laughs> Why are you making that face? I'm gonna, I'm gonna show y'all this video. We already know you're not a stud, so what? what I don't what know. You <laughs> you're not even a stud, so let's get into it. I'm not. <laughs> You know how many comments I have on this video of y'all being like, oh, I ain't never seen an Indian stud. First of all, I'm not, Af I don't have any African descent. I cannot claim stud. Fred, what's going on? Y'all didn't tell me you had to be black. I didn't know you had to be black to be a stud. This whole time. But did they say i don't have any african descent so i'm not a stud yes this is exactly but i want to point out one thing i have never seen an indian stud <laughs> <laughs> that is my first time seeing an indian stud and i've been seeing them on my for you page they funny they be they be lighting lighting them up they be talking about the haircut <laughs> but uh, indian stud is crazy that is definitely my first time seeing it is the and I need to control oh, my thoughts so that I don't say nothing too crazy. But um nah bro. I mean maybe I'm just am I too newly of a gay or are we not like are we no. new gays? No, because... people are just making up anything. I never heard that one. So all studs are black. That's racist. <laughs> that is racist. And stud means still titties under that shirt. Okay. <laughs> Under that dress, under, under the dress. dress, I don't know. <laughs> oh, wait, true. Still I'm like, that. Still still oh, that there. under there, under there, under you so D -E -R -E, there, but I'm I mean, like, yeah, there, there. I call white people stud, like white studs, black studs, yeah. Hispanic studs, you Hispanic I studs, <laughs> what. <laughs> Put yeah, a I don't know. That's the first time I heard that. That's the first time I heard that. But that's the first time I seen this Indian stud. So <laughs> now I'm fucked up about it all the way around. I've never seen an Indian stud. They really oh. an Indian stud? <laughs> Bro, I'm weak. I'm weak. I hate you. Hey, Indian stud is crazy. <laughs> I want to go to India now. I want to link. <laughs> I want to link with my guy. I don't even know she's in India, bro. I want to link with my guy. <laughs> <laughs> I want to eat some naan, nigga. <laughs> she ain't black. She ain't no stud. All right. What you right. think? What you think? <laughs> bro, if you a stud, you a stud. Right, it ain't about being black. 
No, like you could be a butch or something, but this don't got nothing to do with color or race or anything like that. I don't know. That's funny. I was I like, what? I was like, this whole time, Buzzbird ain't tell me it was a black thing. I didn't know. All right. First on new every day. Okay. All right. This the last thing I got. She well, got how you, money. How you say her name? Shikari. No, when you bet not. Mess Shikari, up her name. How you say it? Ain't it Shikari? Anyway, we know who she is. <laughs> she don't play by her name. Okay, no disrespect, sis. No Let's disrespect. see how you pronounce it. Is it Shikari? Or is it, I know it ain't Shikari. Shakira. Shikara. Shikara. If Excuse us, y'all. We know we're supposed to get her name right. We know oh, she, she is. Yeah, it look tiny. 20 right. million, hold on. <laughs> Let me see if I can zoom in. Who went to all them zeros? 20 million. Yeah, so they said, first of all, the fastest woman in the world. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Because if y'all don't know, which you should know by now, she is definitely part of the community, okay? Major. Because we're going to claim you, sis. We're going to claim you. Hey. And just to be clear, we claimed you when you were smoking that blunt too. We was like, yeah, I was like, and yes, yeah, so was bad. You, you was going through tough times. Nobody doubted you, but I'm so happy you just shut up and showed out. Well, you ain't really mm -hmm. shut up, but I'm just saying you just let your you you stood up and you you shit it on everybody that hated on you. Shit All up. right, but yo, so she reportedly got. A twenty million dollar endorsement deal um, with uh, Nike and other um, endorsements, which will last up to twenty twenty eight. Yo, that is huge. Yeah. That is huge. We have to yeah. yeah. Twenty mil. You saw how she oh. she was like. Shout out. Miss son, and you know what was crazy when we did Revolt World, she was in the tent with us, and I didn't even realize that was her. What? Yeah, because she did a panel. You know how we was in the back where all the guests was at. She was sitting lit, and I was looking at her. I'm like, damn, she looked unfamiliar. It was her. Dang. Well, y'all became friends with her. I could have got at least, at least a thousand. No. Not too sure. A thousand hurt you got 20 million. Y'all hate <laughs> people like you. She don't owe you nothing. <laughs> Make a donation to the No Homo show. That's what I would have said. He donated. Yo, I would love to have her on the show, but I don't want to jeopardize her bag at all. So that one we, right. we would have to prep for because we'd be speaking kind of crazy. And I will take out whatever she asked to because sis, I'm here for the win. Okay. Um we support you uh like Salute to you. For real. Nah, that's major. And um, it's definitely one of those stories where it's like, hey, y'all was talking all that. And she on the top. World's fastest woman in the world? World's oh. fastest woman in the world? <laughs> I had to say it twice. <laughs> I had to say it twice. World's fastest woman in the world. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, facts. And, and that's why I said sometimes, y'all, it ain't even worth arguing with people. Like, just show them. Yeah. For real, for real. Just show Roger. them. Pew. Yeah. Jesus. Um. And before we close out, I definitely want to say we're going to Miami in May. You're ugly. Oh, okay. <laughs> Clap. Where the round of applause at? Damn it, again? Okay. <laughs> we, we, all right, look. You going to Miami and May, right? Look, did, I don't care what city you're from, especially if you're from like a smaller city and you haven't been around a whole bunch of lesbians, you haven't got to see so many beautiful people. I know y'all, if y'all tune into the No Homo Show, we talk about these small towns only got three or four baddies. <laughs> if you're trying to see 100, 200, 300, yeah. Come to Magic City, Miami, y'all, because have a plethora. Yes, and the thing is, y'all. Um, so I just want to run down some events real quick. On Let's Thursday, turn up. This is in May, y'all. May 16th to 19th. Thursday, we turning up. Friday, open boat yacht party. Oh my god, it's so fun. And y'all, it's bar open, yacht party. Oh, open boat. Open boat. 
I'm drunk now. Look. Okay. And I ain't drunk. Open I ain't bar drunk. yacht party. Open bar yacht party is oh, so cool. much fun, y'all. Um. Friends. Also, so also we got the no homo show. Yeah. We got a, we got a beach link up. We got Saturday night all white party. You know what I'm saying? Um. Sunday the wet herd. Oh. Day party, y'all. Oh. It's we and look. I know. I don't even know. All right, but like the next for the next two days, the tickets are early bird special. After that, just get them for what they are. It's MagicCityMiami.net. But this is going up, so get y'all tickets. But but I think they don't believe us. I think we should just show them. Yeah, let's get it. Let's get into it. What's up, ladies? We are taking over Miami for Magic City, Miami. We got the flyest ladies in the building, the hottest DJs, best performers. You do not want to miss it for an unforgettable weekend. This is an exclusive event for women who love women. Everybody from all over the country will be partying with us, so make sure you party with us too. We'll see you May 16th to the 19th in Magic City, Miami. I'm there. I'm there. I'm Not there. Yeah, my bad. You wasn't even watching the commercial. I hate hey, you. Hey, a time is about to be had, y'all. We just locked in Woody from the Hoochie Daddy. So we're going to have some of the Hoochie Daddies in the building from season two. We got DJ Sammy Blends locked in. DJ Kid Fresh. DJ Kid Fresh like We ain't gonna tell you everybody. We got DJ Boss Okay, the hottest duo gonna be in the building. Make sure y'all come party with us, man. Cause y'all already know we on. It, it's really no other duo doing what we do, y'all. I don't know if a lot of y'all party with us before, but ain't nobody messing with us. And I say that humbly, respectfully, but truthfully. Nah, we facts. And we're doing a no homo show there, and y'all can get y'all tickets for that. Yeah, like we're going up, we can't wait to see y'all. And we hitting y'all states, meet us where we at. It's it's okay, Rick. That's how you close out. <laughs> ain't gonna show us no, no, well, we can't oh, right, get right, banned right. on this thing. <laughs> They wouldn't, even, they wouldn't even notice. They wouldn't even notice. Like, hey, put your shoulder up. It's not my shoulder. <laughs> All right, y'all. It's the No Homo News. Yay.